Now, we saw that there's different categories of how, how much we know and um, based on sizes. So how do we actually firstly find and track these things? Okay, so how easy it is to track the space junk depends on the size of it. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. It actually ties into what's called space situational awareness, yes. which is a, kind of a military term that you want to know what's up there, both yep. yours and the enemies and what orbits they're all in and how they change orbit. So for large things, this is done with optical telescopes. There's the United States Air Force Space Surveillance Network yep. and other telescopes from other countries around the world. And these just are wide field review, wide angle lens cameras that take pictures of the sky over again, looking for things that move. So I guess it's no different than actually for us finding asteroids, for instance. Yeah, in fact, many of the same telescopes can be used for these purposes. And this will spot the big things, so 10 centimetres and up. Yep. Depends on orbit they're in, it, uh, something quite low up to 10 centimetres. If it's further out, it might need to be bigger to reflect enough light for exactly. you to see it. And then on smaller scales, you use radar. Okay. And this can pick up um, the one centimeter, 10 centimeter type things to some extent. And I guess new radar technologies are coming in to push that limit a little bit lower? Yeah. For the really small things, you're not going to track them. Yeah. But they sometimes put, like on the side of the Hubble Space Telescope yes. or in the uh, shuttle, they will deploy a, oh, sometimes a piece of aerogel yep. and they'll just pick up what hits it and count them. So they, they have some idea of how many of the small things are up there, but you can't see them from the Earth's surface. That's right. And they might be launching satellites to do it now, which could actually look down from space and try and yep. have the space situational awareness. So here's an example of that. This is the Haystack radio, right. um, which is finding these things. And here's a SkyMapper telescope at our own Siding Spring Observatory, which has been used for a lot of this space situational awareness. And again, it originally designed for wide field of view to find things like comets for you and supernova for me, but now retrofitted essentially just through software, ideally, to find these satellites. And of course, if you know what's up there and what yeah. orbit it's all in, that can give you advanced warning of a potential collision. Yes. This now happens on a quite routine basis. People say there's a one in a thousand chance that the spacecraft will hit that one in two days' time. And if either of the spacecraft is under control and has fuel left for its yes, thrusters, right. it can then move its orbit up 100 metres or down 100 metres or something like that, so it avoids it. Exactly. These are now fairly routine processes. That's right. But it's also critical then for preventing more space junk, as we talked about, right? You want to limit those collisions so you don't get that Kessler syndrome propagation effect. Uh, so what can we do? Yep.